are listening to the 90 Days Later podcast with Anna Charles, episode 50. Welcome to the 90 Days Later podcast, where I show you how to stop over drinking in 90 days without missing out on life. If you're not an alcoholic, but fed up with saying yes to a drink when you mean to say no, you're in the right place. Hi all, welcome back to the podcast. Today I'm going to talk about something that was actually a big fear of mine back in the day, in fact for the longest time, and something that really kept me drinking. Now I think the youngsters these days call it FOMO, and it's the fear of missing out. And I used to hate the idea of missing out, even though I was taking this very positive decision to change my drinking. And I hear about this so much from people and we're actually coming up to the party time of the year. Lots and lots of parties and gets together, get togethers rather, uh, so that, you know, who wants to go to one of those feeling like they're missing out? So I thought this would be a cool subject to talk about today. Firstly, what I want to cover here is to think about who you are as a person. Who do you want to be? Now, I'm not just talking here around your drinking, right? Not just a sort of this one-off thought, but in all areas of your life. Who do you want to be? Right? How do you see yourself? And it's almost like I want you to, you know, you have the phone and you can flip the lens or, you know, that was in the old days, I suppose, but you can press the button and flip it and you can now take a photo of yourself, right? We have that capacity to do that. In fact, in, remember in the past, you, used to have, you didn't used to be able to do that. You had to get somebody else to take a photo of you. And I do remember once, um, I, I love Terry Hall and specials and his biggest fan probably. Anyway, I'm so excited. I went to one of his concerts and... After the gig, I managed to, I was there, he was managed to get some time chatting to Terry. It was such a woohoo moment and I wanted a photo, but I had to ask somebody else to take the photo. It was you know, a few years ago now. And in that moment, I had no control over what that person did, over whether they took the photo, whether their finger was in front of the lens, you know, whether it was shaky, blurred, too far out, too close in. And... Yet today, we actually have that level of control with our phones, right? We just press that button and it kind of flips the lens from looking out to looking into ourselves. So that's what I really want you to do today. I want you to imagine you're flipping that lens and you're looking at yourself through the camera. You're turning the camera on you. Who do you want to be? Do you want to be someone who overdrinks? Do you want to be someone who gets fun and pleasure from outside of yourself? Right? Do you want to be somebody who feels that they're missing out when everyone else is drinking? Do you want to be someone who needs wine, really? Maybe maybe you don't even say need. Maybe you sneakily say that you'd rather not have wine. But even so, you're still believing that you know wine is there. The purpose of wine is to have a good time or it's just going to be a bit, bit boring. Or maybe not even boring, maybe just a bit less. Right? A bit... Ugh. I could go to that party. There's not going to be any wine, so it's going to be sort of take it or leave it. I mean, why would I even bother, really? This level of thinking is so important because you really need to understand what you are thinking about when it comes to alcohol. And this is a very personal uh, situation, very personal work that you'll be doing here. Look at why you're using alcohol. Look at the story you're telling yourself. For instance, are you telling yourself that it's fun. Alcohol is fun. I do like it. I do like the taste and I really do. It does make social situations better, right? Look at, are you telling yourself these things? Is this a story that you have on repeat that you don't see? Start here. It's so important to start here because to change our habits and to change who we are, to change who we are around alcohol, we have to be aware of this stuff because otherwise what happens is we get these tools and techniques to do this, this or this and we kind of just pack that on, right? We say, right, I'm going to try whatever this, this thing is Anna said to try. But then you're kind of going to end up just doing a dry January, you know, sort of one of these point solutions. It won't become permanent because you're not really looking at the overall you, all right? You're not looking at really how you are, because this is all going to impact 
this sense of missing out, right? So you've got this whole story going on. So start calling out some of these repeat thoughts. Now, back in the day, as I've said many times, I was, a, was very much a white wine, a Chablis drinker, Premier Cru, I would tell myself I like the good stuff, even though it didn't always didn't need to be the good stuff. But I had also quite a hankering for Southern comfort. I used to really quite like a Southern comfort on a night out. And I used to have it with 7-Up and then over time that sort of water, watered the taste down too much and I became a Southern Comfort on the rocks girl, right? And I'd be in a situation where I'd say, ooh, that'd be, that'd be really fun actually. I haven't had one of those for a while, I'll have a Southern Comfort or a SoCo. That's what somebody used to work with in the States would call it a SoCo. And I would be talking about this Southern Comfort in such a way it was kind of like this most amazing treat, right? This kind of like treat language. And then I think, whoa, <laughs> wait, somebody who doesn't overdrink, somebody's not going to, doesn't overdrink, isn't going to think, whoa, it's going to be such a treat to have a Southern comfort. And that's not me. That's not the identity I want to have. I'm someone who doesn't want to think that way anymore. And I would then redirect myself to thinking about something else. It didn't really matter what. And I do this also on the fly as I was out and about at bars and stuff. I'd look at people I know who don't drink very much or I'd even um, imagine someone in the bar and I'd imagine perhaps it was even me in the bar not wanting a drink. Right, just I'd put myself in the, it was always the swish places that seemed to be harder in a swish place, not wanting a drink. And I'd wonder and imagine. And by the way, side note, imagination is a super great tool for changing your relationship with alcohol, right? Because the brain doesn't know the difference between imagination and real life. So we can really sort of play these things out. And that's why you hear a lot about visualization and really getting into the details. So I'd imagine, I'd imagine myself, I'd put myself in a bar. And what would I be thinking? And I knew for sure, it got to the point that I knew for sure I wouldn't be the person who would think, ooh, Southern Comfort would be fun and I'd be running off to get one. It just wouldn't happen. It just that wouldn't have computed. Right? And so I'd be thinking different things and by thinking different things I wouldn't be reinforcing what I was starting to see as the old Anna who had, you know, these desire-laden thoughts for Southern Comfort or for White Wine. And it's not that there's anything wrong with having the drink, right? This is not an opportunity to kind of, you know, thrash ourselves with feeling bad. It's much more about not wanting to sabotage. I didn't want to sabotage myself. And I, you know, I didn't want to think, be thinking that I really like wine and then I, you know, would, would feel me feeling bad the next day because I'd be then waking up feeling groggy and I'd inevitably snack when I'd been drinking. So n none of it was what I wanted. It wasn't producing the result I wanted. And even though I liked the taste of it, I did. And I can still remember the, that taste of Southern Comfort, I know, and the wine, but Southern Comfort I'm going to talk about today. I know a lot of people think it's sickly sweet, but actually, yeah, I can remember it. I used to like the taste. And I'd like the buzz. I'd like the buzz it would give me. I, it came a point when I was like, I just don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to be the person who thinks to have a good time is to pour a Southern Comfort and to get that buzz. But I had to catch myself thinking that. This wasn't something that I could watch a webinar or listen to a podcast without doing the work. So I really want you, if you're listening to this, really start to get to grips with all those thoughts that you're thinking, right? By looking at yourself, flip that camera lens on you. It's so important because if you don't clean up what you're thinking, right? You're not going to be in, in alignment with what you're doing because you're trying to change. You know, that's when we get to the point where we just change the action of drinking. But it's a struggle and a fight because in our heads, we're like, still, yeah, still Southern Comfort is really nice. Or white wine, that, that's the best. You want to have a good night out. So, of course, it's going to be hard to change the action of drinking if we've got this other story running in our head. So that's really sort of like the, the step before this idea of the missing. It's like the, the taster, 
it's like the the starter you know on a on a menu here this is the starter before we get into the sense of how to stop feeling like you're missing out is to be aware to start with of what you're telling yourself okay so now i'm going to get into where um this this concept of missing out where it's also actually becomes a double whammy when i lived in the states i was told a double whammy is a double bad thing right so um, you hope i'm using that um that expression correctly here because when you fear that you're going to miss out from fun by not drinking is actually worse than that so i want you to imagine you're going out to a party over christmas and you've decided you're not going to drink or you're not going to over drink how do you feel right how do you feel about that idea perhaps you've been invited to a wine pairing taste a menu right this is a big one for so many people right you've been invited out to this but you've decided that you don't want to have wine i mean it's in the title right it's the wine tasting or the wine pairing taster menu you know it's, you'd be nuts people would think to not have the wine right there and then that's an opportunity to, for you to feel that you're going to be missing out and you might feel totally justified yeah of course i'm going to be missing out right even if you've decided that your decision to not drink that evening or let's say to not over drink just gonna have a couple and these are goals that you really want for yourself right you've, you've really um decided you want to stop over drinking you may still have that little voice in there saying yeah you're gonna be missing out maybe it's there when you make the plan to drink less or not at all but then by golly at least i used to find that voice would then get louder and louder the closer the event got and the way i like to think about this is i have three children all grown up now but when they were young you know, they had to put on this really me, 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 me voice. Oh, mum, oh, mum. And I like to think of that here, right? I've got this whiny voice. You're going to be missing out, right? You're not going to have a nice time. And so that would show up for me. And actually, the, the, the most time that I, this would show up for me was if we were planning to go out for a special lunch. In fact, we call a special, we call it a long lunch, now, long lunch was code who were just going to basically go to the restaurant. Probably the service starts at about 12. And we probably, you know, won't leave until maybe six or seven. I mean, I've been to many a lunch where the restaurant has been setting up the evening tables. I mean, we've been paying our lunch bill as the diners have been coming in for the evening. All right. Because it was this and this was a treat. This is really a blowout. Right. We're going to go and we're going to have all we're going to have lovely champagne to start with and have lots of wine maybe have a sauterne with with dessert i mean just all the things such a wonderful sublime treat sublime treat and i would definitely therefore in the early days when i decided i wanted to you know change who i was around drinking i would definitely have some huge sense of missing out for one of these lunches right and the thought that would be there with me because I did a lot of dissection of my thoughts was obviously you'd be having a far better time if you were drinking and therefore sort of the postscript to there was so that was that by not drinking I'd be missing out now you can see how the thought obviously you'll have be have you'd be having a far better so you would be let me be very specific in my language here obviously you would be having a far better time if you were drinking right it's a lot of conditional language in there but just you know telling me the whole way that that thought is constructed is like uh you wouldn't, wouldn't want to be on the opposite end of that right and and that would then make me just feel annoyed and then i said well this is bizarre and this is stupid because of course anna you you're making this decision. i mean you're the only one making this decision but so yeah yeah but i can still feel annoyed about it and I'd end up almost twisting the fact that I was doing this for myself, right? That this was a gift. This was a precious gift I was giving my future self to move into being the person where, you know, I wouldn't, wouldn't want to have drink to have a good time. So I twist it in my mind to say, well, it's not fair because <laughs> you're, you're missing out. 
it's not fair and why is everyone else at the table going to be able to enjoy themselves with all that wine and of course you won't right I'd be having a better time if I had a champagne aperitif I'd be having a better time if I was able to join in with the white wine I'd be having a better time if you know I just didn't care if I was drinking or not if 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 I get to this place where I was believing that the thing I was doing would be better if I was actually doing something else. This is another instance where flipping that camera lens is so important because whenever I was feeling this way, I realised that what I was doing was I was comparing myself to others and to their experience, right? I'd be comparing myself, I'd be looking around at the people at the lunch table who perhaps they'd be feeling uninhibited and they'd be laughing merrily and they'd be sloshing the stuff back. They'd be kicking back and they were having the best time and I'd be telling myself they're having the best time because they're drinking. And whereas because I wasn't drinking, I wouldn't be, right? So my experience would be less than theirs. I was looking at others. I was wanting their experience. I was telling myself that what they were feeling and doing was better than what I was having. And, you know, and so it wasn't a really great place for me to be in. And I was, my, my attention was all outward. I had that camera. I was taking the video. It was all of their experience. I was using that lens to, to try and gauge what was going on with them. And whenever that happened, a couple of things. Not only did I feel bad because it created these feelings of lack and missing out, right? If if I was doing that, then this would be better, right? And they're going to laugh more than I was because they're drinking. Not only that, this is where the double whammy comes in because I would also be missing out on the good in the experience that I was actually having, having, it was actually happening in that moment. I'd be so concerned looking outside at others and feeling sorry for myself that I hasn't, wasn't having what they were having because obviously they were having a far better time than me. I wouldn't see everything I had right there in front of me. Right, I wouldn't see the fun I was having just, just sitting around the table with friends. I wouldn't see the fact that in these particular friends we used to do that with, we would only see each other a couple of times a year. And so it was a very precious time to spend with them. I wouldn't enjoy the fact that we were in this glitzy restaurant on the goodness knows what floor. It's on some fancy schmancy hotel in London. We used to do this, right? I wouldn't see the most glorious view that there was outside the windows. I wouldn't be so deeply enjoying the food and tasting the food that I was eating, right? Because I'd be... I was looking outside of myself at others. I was actually making my experience worse, right? I was looking at them and I was deciding they were having a better time. They were having more fun, which then was perceived by me as a lack or diminishment of my pleasure, which then actually prevented me from enjoying the pleasure I had. Ah, But I wasn't feeling that pleasure that's right there because I decided that I was going to be missing out right and that's just that oh well it's okay just gonna have to suck it up right and of course by just thinking you just got to suck it up you then don't see what's there right slap bang in front of your face so if you find yourself doing this perhaps you're trying to shove away this thought right that you're going to be missing out perhaps you're trying to push away that voice that says this you know this is not going to be so cool I mean, you're really not going to have such a good time. You can have a go, but it's obviously not going to be so good. But that's okay because you just you've decided this. You're just going to have to jolly well, you know, pick up your socks and just get on with it, All right? Stop feeling this way. That kind of talk is likely to not drive you in the direction you want. So instead, just stay in in curiosity, be inquisitive. And we talk a lot about cues and triggers in drinking. Right. So I want you to use this sense of missing out. If you if you're in this environment and you're feeling you're missing out, I want you to use that as a trigger to say, well, mm, bring you back to the moment. What is pleasurable for me in this moment? Right. You can attach that question, that forward, open ended, a curious question to the sensation of you know, if you feel like you're, you're missing out. If you do this, you can look at, well, where can I find pleasure? Start asking yourself that. So rather than telling yourself what not to look for, 
i.e. so it doesn't always help to say well stop looking at other people look at their experience look for where you can focus your brain to look for enjoyment that's right there for you again so it's flip that camera lens at you what are you in control of in that moment where can you actively find pleasure by being present in the moment this is so important because If you're feeling that you're missing out and you're a bit deprived and miserable, that is not sustainable over the long term, right? That's where people can go for weeks, months, even years giving up drinking. And then they kind of just say, oh, you know, the dam just just breaks. I'm just going to drink because we're human. Pleasure and enjoyment is important to us. Really is. So I want you to be able to look for pleasure Because if you're thinking that you're missing out because it would be just so much better with wine and woe is me and therefore it's just not ever going to be so good. Well, that's a really dreary thought, right? That's when we start to get into, oh, I can't do this for the rest of my life. And why would you want to? I mean, I wouldn't sign up for that. I mean, who would sign up for this sort of change that meant life would be that little bit less or maybe a lot less without drinking in it? Right, so flip the camera lens and look at what, where you can find pleasure right now without that sense of missing out. And finally here, my third point, it's a bit of a fun one actually, is, is to do with this idea of turning the camera on yourself and, and flipping that camera on yourself and switching out the narrative is by not over drinking. What are you missing out from, right? Because so often we say, so if we don't, we're not going to drink, we're going to be missing out. Our brains are very good at this. Our brains are very quick to say, we're going to be missing out on the fun. We'll be missing out on the laughter. We'll be missing out on the buzz. We'll be missing out on perhaps the silliness. We'll be missing out on just being a member of the group, right? We, and we say those things and we believe them. So ask yourself by not over drinking, what do you miss out from? You miss out from disconnecting from the event or from not connecting with the people that you're with. You miss out from slurred speech. You miss the tiredness. You miss that sick feeling. You miss the not being able to drive and have to rely on someone else to get you home. You miss out on all that messed up sleep or the weight gain through having the munchies and all those empty calories. You're going to miss out on the hangover. You're going to miss out on the anxiety and beating yourself up in the morning. You're going to miss out on the giving up on yourself. These are just some examples. But see how just by looking at it from the complete opposite angle, you can paint a very different picture of what you are missing out on. Then it's up for you to decide which one you go after. So in summary, Pay attention. If you say like you're missing out, I hate missing out, pay attention to when you're missing out. Don't just blow past it. First, consider the person you want to be and the person who doesn't overdrink. All those things we talk about missing, right? The buzz, losing the inhibitions and so on, are all those things, are those things we want to be missing. Do we actually want to be someone who misses those things or not? Second, Don't miss out on the enjoyment and pleasure that's actually there by fretting and comparing your experience to others and thinking that your experience is going to be less than because you're not drinking, right? This will actually stop you from really experiencing the pleasure that is actually right there at your fingertips. Thirdly, switch up the narrative and ask, what is it you're really missing out from anyway if we don't drink? We're so good at giving us one side of the equation but not the other. So give the other some time. Okay, that's it for this week. Thank you so much for listening. This, my podcasts are all free. It's my free content I liked in order to be a help, able to help as many people as possible. And it would be so good if you're enjoying the content, if you're learning from this, could you go in there and rate and review for me? Because that will mean then it's easier for more people to find this podcast and get the help that they want for themselves as well. Okay, that's it. Thanks a lot. And I'll see you next week. If you like what you're learning in the podcast and you want to take the work further and achieve total freedom around alcohol, let's talk. I help my clients stop reaching for that first glass of wine the moment 6pm rolls around and they don't miss out on life. And we do it in 90 days. The effect is permanent. 
Email me for more information on anna at 90dayslater.co. And if you did enjoy the show, I'd really appreciate if you'd leave a rating and review to help others find the 90 Days Later podcast.